Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing physiology and clinical measurement as AQ1. Define anhydro carbon dioxide ETCO2 and how is it measured? Two marks. ETCO2 refers to the peak CO2 concentration at the end of expiration. Infrared spectroscopy is the main method of CO2 measurement in the operation theatre. Both inspired and expired CO2 concentrations can be measured continuously. Any molecule that contains two or more different atoms will absorb infrared radiation, for example, CO2, nitrous oxide, and all other anesthetic inhalational agents. CO2 absorbs infrared radiation maximally at a wavelength of 4.3 micrometer. Applying Beer's law, energy absorbed by CO2 from the narrow band of infrared light passing through a gas chamber is proportional to the concentration of the absorbing molecules of CO2. The concentration of CO2 can then be determined by comparing the absorbance with that of a known standard. Other methods of CO2 measurement include calorimetric CO2 measurement, mass spectrometry, and Raman spectrography. Additional information. In the sampling chamber, the amount of absorbed infrared radiation is proportional to the number of CO2 molecules in the gas sample. The remaining unabsorbed infrared radiation falls on the photodetector, which is a thermal pile detector, and heat is produced and measured by a temperature sensor. The amount of CO2 present is inversely proportional to the amount of infrared light detected at the photodetector. The heat generated is proportional to the partial pressure of CO2 present in the gas sample. This produces an electrical output. In the reference chamber, similarly, infrared light passes through a reference chamber which contains room air periodically and its amount is detected by the photodetector. Its purpose is for calibration against zero with a known CO2 concentration to avoid drift. The amount of infrared absorption is compared between the sample and the reference chamber and CO2 values are calculated. Issues affecting the accuracy of CO2 measurement includes ETCO2 will not be accurate in patients with COPD where there is a sloping expiratory trace as alveoli empty CO2 unevenly. It is difficult to interpret ETCO2 in the pediatric population due to high respiratory rate, small tidal volumes, and mixing of tidal breath with fresh gas. Dilution of ETCO2 can occur in system leaks. CO2 and nitrous oxide has a similar infrared light absorption profile for which modern instruments can compensate. Without compensation, falsely elevated CO2 readings will occur as a consequence of collision broadening. A high oxygen concentration can falsely increase pCO2 readings due to a broadening effect of oxygen on the light absorption. A correcting factor that is built into the monitors can correct for this. Question 2. Draw and label a capnogram. Two marks. This is a diagram of a capnogram. Phase 1 represents the washout of the anatomic and circuit dead space, which is usually lacking in CO2. Phase 2 consists of a S-shaped upstroke curve. PCO2 readings increase during this transition phase from low to high CO2 content, as the gases originating from the alveolar spaces, which are high in CO2, progressively washes out the gases from the dead space which are low in CO2. Changes in perfusion affects this phase significantly. Phase 3 consists of a slow rising high plateau and represents CO2 drawn from the alveolar units. A slow rising plateau occurs instead of a flat horizontal plateau because there is a variable rate of diffusion of CO2 from the different alveolar units which have different ventilation perfusion ratios. A flat horizontal plateau will only occur if all units had equal VQ ratios. The phase 3 slope is affected by increased airway resistance and changes in VQ ratios. ETCO2 is the uppermost point of the PCO2 in phase 3. Phase 4 or phase 0 is the inspiratory phase. This initiates at the transition between expiration and inspiration and consists of a sharp decline and return to the low baseline. This phase ends with the initiation of a new inspiration where phase 1 starts. Additional information. The alpha angle is the angle formed between the lines representing phase 2 and 3. It is normally 110 degrees. Alpha angle is affected by overall VQ status, variations in time constants 
within different alveolar units, cardiac output, airway resistance, and FRC. The beta angle is the angle formed between the lines representing phase 3 and 0. It is commonly affected by rebreathing. Question 3. List the causes of increased and decreased ETCO2, 3 marks. Causes of increased ETCO2 includes hypoventilation, rebreathing, sepsis, malignant hyperpyrexia, hypothermia, skeletal muscle activity, hypermetabolism. Other causes of increased ETCO2 includes exogenous CO2 administered during laparoscopy, sodium bicarbonate administration and the administration of stored blood, TPN using high carbohydrate content, average normal CO2 production is approximately 200 mL per minute, which can increase during consumption of high carbohydrate contents, and VQ mismatch, for example, in severe COPD. Other causes of hyperthermia apart from malignant hyperpyrexia includes neuroleptic malignant syndrome, serotonin syndrome, anticholinergic syndrome, and sympathomimetic syndrome. Causes of reduced ETCO2 includes hyperventilation, pulmonary embolism, hypoperfusion, hypometabolism, hypothermia, hypovolemia, and hypotension. Question 4. What are the physiological effects of hypercarbia? 3 marks. In the respiratory system, arterial oxygen saturation falls below 90% at an alveolar PCO2 of over 60 mmHg breathing air. Based on the alveolar gas equation, PaO2 equals FiO2 times PATM minus PH2O minus PaCO2 divided by R. Other respiratory effects include increased respiratory drive by stimulation of central and peripheral chemoreceptors, tidal volume and respiratory rate increases, the extent varies with other factors. Respiration is depressed at very high levels of PaCO2. Response to hypoxemia is increased to increase minute ventilation. The oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve shifts to the right. Cardiovascular effects of hypercarbia include increased sympathetic activity, causing increases in circulating catecholamine levels, heart rate, arterial BP, which overrides CO2's direct myocardial depressant effects. Arrhythmias may occur. There will be increased cerebral blood flow and potentially increased ICP and intraocular pressure. Other effects of hypercarbia include dilated pupils with sluggish response, respiratory acidosis and hyperkalemia. Initial bicarbonate increase is about 1 millimole per liter per 10 mmHg of PaCO2 above 40 mmHg if hypercapnia is acute. Renal compensation includes bicarbonate retention and excretion of hydrogen ions. Bicarbonate increase in chronic hypercapnia is about 4 millimoles per liter per 10 mmHg increase in PaCO2. CO2 narcosis may result with confusion, headache, and coma. Hypercarbia has anti-inflammatory effects. Additional information. Permissive hypercapnia. Clinical trials show that hypercapnia is safe for most patients up to PaCO2 of 60 to 70 mmHg and arterial pH of 7.2 to 7.25. Benefits of permissive hypercapnia include attenuation of ventilator-associated lung injury, myocardial protection, attenuation of reperfusion brain injury, delay in hepatocyte cell death, and anti-inflammatory effects.